Hello, I'm Greg Michelson, and I'm going to talk about programming paradigms, Turing completeness, and computational thinking. So as an overview, I'm going to think about what are programming paradigms, and indeed whether there is such a thing. If there is such a thing, where does the idea come from? Then back up a bit and look at the notion of paradigms. I'm then going to argue that programming paradigms are not paradigmatic, and if anything, there's a single computer science paradigm with Turing completeness as the theory and computational thinking as the methodology. So a programming language paradigm is commonly thought of as a programming language and a problem solving methodology. And the three big ones, are procedural programming with sequence choice and iteration, with the methodologies of structured programming and stepwise refinement. Then there's object oriented programming where you've got classes made up of methods and elements with inheritance and object-oriented design using methodologies like UML. And functional programming based on anonymous and higher order functions with the methodologies of abstraction and specialization. So are there actually programming paradigms? Well, Krishnamurthy and Harper both dispute that there are programming paradigms at all. And Ted Ray suggests that computer science isn't mature enough for there to be paradigms. But on the other hand, Van Roy suggests that there are 30 paradigms. So how can we look at this? So where do programming paradigms come from? Well, I reckon they start with Floyd's 1978 Turing Award lecture. He said that a paradigm was a programming methodology supported by a language. And he identified structured programming, branch and bound, divide and conquer, and state machine. Then in a 1986 CACM article, Gibson Tucker introduced the complementary idea of programming styles. And they said that styles drive languages, and they identified the styles of procedural, functional, object-oriented, logic, and data flow. Also in 1986, Shriver in IEEE software distinguished between paradigm-induced languages and languages that induce paradigms. And he identified the paradigms of procedural, non-procedural, functional, visual, logic, and object-oriented. In the same issue, Halepern identified the paradigms of access-oriented, data flow, data structure-oriented, functional, imperative, object-oriented, parallel, real-time, and rules-oriented. So in the eight years after Floyd's Turing Award lecture, there was a huge divergence as well as some commonality in what exactly the programming paradigms were. Finally, in 1989, Peter Wegner said, I think definitively, that paradigms are induced by languages. And he identified the paradigms of distributed, parallel, functional and logic programming. Indeed, in 1991, the ACM IEEE curricula enshrined the idea of language-induced paradigms. However, the specific paradigms changed as the curricula changed in 2001 and 2013, and in the latest version, they're now downplayed. So what are paradigms? Well, they originate with Thomas Kuhn's very, very influential book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions from 1962. And he said that a paradigm is a self-consistent body of knowledge and practice. He also said that at any given moment, there is a single dominant scientific paradigm. However, prevailing paradigms are superseded by new ones when you get a profound mismatch between what the orthodoxy predicts and what observable reality looks like. He also said that paradigm shifts involve changes in how the world is characterized as fundamental changes and typically they're full of strife between the old paradigm and the new one, or the proponents of the old and the new paradigm. So for example, the shift between the Ptolemaic view of the universe with the Earth at the centre and the Copernican view of the Sun being at the centre involved, amongst other things, Galileo being silenced by the Vatican. More recently, the shift from Newtonian mechanics to Einsteinian relativistic physics didn't involve quite as much strife, but still it was a big, big, big shift. Nonetheless, Kuhn says that there may be different traditions that coexist within a paradigm with differences of emphasis. For example, 
quantum physics is treated differently in physics itself and in electrical engineering and in material science and indeed in mathematics. So I think programming paradigms are really not paradigmatic. We watch all the time language wars, but nonetheless, no one language predominates. If you look at the admittedly rather small graph on the right hand side of the image, you can see that it's pretty well flatlined. At the top, we've got JavaScript, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby. Then we've got four brands of C, C Sharp, C++, C and Objective-C. And then we've got a variety of other languages that come and go. Certainly historically, we can see a trend from numbers and machine code to mnemonics and assembler to high level languages that are more human-like, but nonetheless, it's hard to characterize what happened thereafter. Nothing has then become dominant. I reckon this is partly because socio-technical factors determine use, in particular, how much investment someone has in a language, what the user base is, how much support is, and increasingly now, open versus closed source as determinants. I think more fundamentally, there are very, very strong overlaps in language constructs. So all languages have some notion of sequence and choice and iteration and abstraction. So we might argue that structured programming is at the core of procedural oriented programming, which has got strong overlaps with object oriented and also functional programming. And designs from any one methodology can be realized in any language for sure with differing degrees of ease. But still, we do see language conversion. And every time languages are revised, they seem to accrete constructs from other languages. So we saw objects added to C. We've recently seen Lambda expressions added to Excel. So I reckon that Turing completeness is the computer science paradigm. There's no one language that's paradigmatic, but as a body of theory, the Church-Turing thesis seems to rule OK, that all models of computability are equivalent. You demonstrate equivalence by translating from one model to another or by evaluating one in another. That's by writing a compiler from one to another or by writing an interpreter. And Church and Turing showed the equivalence of Turing machines and Lambda calculus back in 1930. And it's held for all subsequent models, including von Neumann machines and arbitrary programming languages. So what about analog computing? Well, Bracker and Costa have showed that it's Turing complete. And what about quantum computing? Well, again, Deutsch showed that quantum computing is Turing complete. So how about transfinite hypercomputation? Well, that really would constitute a, a new paradigm as Mark Hogarth has argued. However, Paul Kotchot, Lewis McKenzie and I have argued that it's both theoretically and practically unrealizable. Also, all Turing complete languages are what are called conservative extensions of each other. That is, you can express any Turing complete language in any other Turing complete language without extending the semantics of the expressing language. Of course, programming languages differ in expressive power, but that's to do with the balance between syntax and semantics. It's not to do with anything fundamental about the languages themselves. I'd also argue that if Turing completeness is, as it were, the paradigm for computer science, then computational thinking is the methodology. There's certainly no paradigmatic problem solving methodology. There's a long history of approaches to problem solving in computing, but actually they're not necessarily motivated or motivating programming languages. And I think, again, socio-technical factors determine the use, in particular, the investment in a particular approach and what's fashionable. So here on the right, we've got flowcharts after von Neumann from 1947 for the ENIAC. The flowcharts are still being taught today, whatever this is 70 years later. There's an awful lot of methodologies, but I think we can put them into four broad classes. So there's programming language oriented, so full strength languages, pedagogic or full strength subsets, functional logic object oriented languages, and then language independent or pseudocode approaches. There are approaches where you go from simple to complex designs, so stepwise refinement, structured programming or iterative programming. There are component based systems like modular programming using specific algorithms and data structures using types and classes and libraries. And there's design based methodologies like flowcharts and data flow and entity relationship in UML. And I think we can use computational thinking to compare them. So after CALS, 
2011 characterization, we can see the four stages in computational thinking, decomposing a problem into components, identifying patterns, elaborating abstractions, or formulating algorithms. Of course, these are iterative, they all interplay with each other. It's not a linear process. So I think that computational thinking encompasses all the methodologies I've just mentioned. They're all variants of decomposition and algorithm, and only functional and logic programming address in any way patterns and abstraction. So what about formal methods? Well, they're essentially systematic stepwise refinement. So they're like decomposition and algorithm. What about design patterns and templates? Well, they're really just structured programming with Richard structures. So an interesting question is, is there a methodology the computational thinking doesn't subsume and that subsumes other methodologies, including computational thinking. So you might wonder about software development techniques or GUI design or usability, but I think these are socio-technical aspects of realizing solutions to problems. They're not involved in the problem solving itself. So to conclude, I think Turing complete computation is the computer science paradigm. I think computational thinking is the computer science methodology. I think different languages and methodologies are like Kuhn's coexisting traditions with the paradigm, and some languages are certainly better suited to some methodologies. So, thank you. Here is a set of references mentioned in the talk. You can find the full set in the paper. Thank you.